I just wanted to talk about the um, the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi here in a little Nintendo case. Um, the composite output they have, the uh, you know red, white, yellow uh, video for video and uh, output for video and audio. Um, it's probably the coolest thing about it for retro gaming because you know the composite output is crucial to getting a good picture on one of these old. Uh, CRT TVs. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi we're looking at right now. I wanted to look specifically at this power bar here because right now it looks pretty good to me. Um, if I switch over to the real Nintendo, it has a very similar consistent look. Um, everything's cropped about the same way too. You can see here that about three, you know, in the middle of that third chain up. I'll go back to the Raspberry Pi now. And it's about at that same spot there. Um, the interesting thing is, in order to get this on the Raspberry Pi, I mean, the default settings get close to this with bilinear filtering on. Um, but you'll notice some of those lines don't look quite right. Um, and you'll notice weird stuff, whatever you're really familiar with. I think the fine detail of these Mega Man 2 power bars makes it an excellent choice for this kind of uh, test. If I load up the this thing here, you can see my set. That's not my settings. That looks like about what the default settings would be, like 640 by 480. Um, it's actually rendering a 640 by 480 image to the screen, but the frame buffer to make it look correct as a Nintendo is this here. What I um, this is the closest thing I could get. Um, the, you know, the horizontal maybe that 717 could maybe be tweaked a little bit, but I think that's as close as I can get it um, to look pixel perfect like it does on the actual Nintendo hardware. So it's uh, I have the frame buffer that it's rendering 717 to 552. So it's a really weird size, but it just happens to. I wouldn't be surprised if for any CRT plugging in through this composite out of the Raspberry Pi if these uh, frame buffer settings here would be pretty good but you gotta set the scaling aspect ratio to custom and then you basically set what your frame buffer is gonna be with that so this is on the Raspberry Pi obviously with the uh, retro retro arc there <laughs> that's my good settings all I'm going to do with my good settings is I'm going to shift it one pixel up. So I'm going to change this from 40 to, uh, it's actually not 40, I'm going to change that from negative 40 to 39. And then you see his face got squished and this bar got all weird. And some variation of this weirdness is what you'll experience um, if you have bilinear filtering on and the default settings. It might look pretty darn good and a lot better than this. Because when the bilinear filtering is off, it's got to be perfect or it really looks like crap. Um, but, you know, none of the hardware used bilinear filtering back in the day. Um, I'm going to change that back. And let's see, just by shifting it up one pixel, everything lines up right now. And just to show you, I'm going to put it back to negative 39. And I'm going to go back out of menu here. Turn bilinear filtering on. Oops. Hit the right button. Okay. So that's at the 39 setting with bilinear filtering on, and it looks almost perfect. It's hard to tell in the. To your eyes, you'll notice these bars up at the top are thinner than the bars down below, and it. It's not supposed to look that way. It, it's strange. When you see it looking that way, you might think, oh, that's fine. 
but you can barely see the differentiating lines in the top bars and the bottom bars you can and it doesn't look like that on the real Nintendo it looks like that on the real Nintendo so if we turn the bilinear back off Should look like crap because of the negative 39 setting. Yep. And just by shifting that pixel, actually, a negative 38 will work too. You'll see. As long as it's on that even. Hmm, 38 for some reason doesn't look perfect to me oh that's interesting yeah so the 38 even though it's still the you know you'd think it would line up the same but 40 lines up the right way and 38 doesn't so go figure and as far as the horizontal lines go um, that's about as good as I could get it it's uh, it's honestly not nearly as distracting with the horizontal lines um, but again you can see on the real Nintendo hardware everything's just a bit smoother So I might be able to get the sweet spot on that horizontal line a little bit better than I have it now. But the uh, the vertical one, I think, looks pretty great at these settings. So I would recommend to, if you're using a Raspberry Pi with a composite output, to mess around with these settings and try to get ones. If you don't have a Nintendo to to do an A-B test with, um, you know, these settings here are pretty close, it looks like, to the actual, like, NTSC uh, output you'd see from one of these guys. Also, I should mention, uh, you're gonna want, are you gonna need to get that perfect, um, like, Nintendo Anything that's old school will use a 240p signal, which is it's a strange thing. It's technically these TVs only did 480i, but the way that the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and the Genesis sent the NTSC signal, it would it would send like two lines at a time. It was essentially 240p instead of 480i. Um, you'll see, you know, in 480i, you get that weird screen flicker. It's probably going to be hard to get on here, but everything kind of flickers a little bit in 480i. And 240p, you don't get that nearly as much. Um, so this is 480i here. You know, you need the 640 by 480 to be able to read any of that. So if I go to load this game up, I will go to the menu here to show you. Um, honestly, I can't remember exactly how I set it up, but there's... Uh, See how it says NTSC 430p there? Let me go into this menu. Um, shit, it doesn't show up, so I better cancel this. I set this somehow else. Alright, so it still says 430p. I forget how I set that, but you need to um, look up a tutorial on how to get the actual... Um, 240p mode. You'll notice when I hit launch here Actually that was bad. That didn't show it as good.
All right, so it's in 480i now, and it'll show this little thing in 480i. And then it's going to switch over to 240p. So you, you need that. Um, 240p output, otherwise you'll get the weird 480i flickery output, and it definitely won't look right.